Well, Aaron, dude, Pete, it's good to have you. Good to have uh, myself. Yeah. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure, dude. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, dude, I appreciate you coming down, dude. I know uh, now it's in person, so just trying to get, um, for one, real quick before we go into, you know, what you're doing today. Yeah. How'd you kind of build up to being an agent? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so as we were talking a little bit earlier, um, I originally got my license back when I was in Colorado, okay. uh, December of 2019, started out there that's a full broker level or nothing, basically. Yeah. So got that. But right before um, doing that, I was working for a wholesale textiles company, actually selling wholesale backup power batteries, big fleets for trucks and stuff like that. And uh, it was a smaller family-owned company that was nationwide and um, sharpened my sales skills doing that. And okay. uh, even before that, I graduated from Cal State Fullerton here in Orange County uh, with a major in psychology, kind of thinking to go into kind of human services type of a role yeah, or yeah. some sort of counseling. You know, I always like helping people, you know yeah. what I mean? And so um, basically building up into that battery career, um, I realized, well, if I can sell something as dull as a battery, you know, boring box of plastic yeah, with yeah. lead in it, you know, I should be able to sell a house. So oh, for sure. lots of thoughts and prayer uh, with my wife and my family. And we finally made the leap. I quit my job, cashed out the 401k, took out about 45k to, you know, have something to land on yeah. while we, we grow. And uh, that was with two sons. Um, so it was a big undertaking, but uh, we decided it was the right way to go. And uh Never look back. I've been turning and burning since then, basically. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. As an agent, you got to turn and burn and, and make sure that, you know, you're you're using every, for one, the dollar that you pulled out, and two, um, the money that you have set aside yeah. to make sure that there's dollar productive, you know, activities going on. Yep. So the return. It, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> you got to have that return. So, you know, for going back to before we unpack, you know, leaving everything else. So the sales job, mm -hmm. what did that teach you going into, Absolutely. you know, having, having your real estate license? So it was interesting. My, it was kind of like the first thing I could get out of college, you know, 2012, I graduated, no jobs in the human services, really. I, or I would have needed to go further in my education. I just didn't have the time or money to do it. I had to pay my way through school, multiple jobs, you know, it, come from humble means, my family, oldest of four. And so the reality was, is like, well, I either just try and get into something and make something out of it, trust my hustle, you know, yeah. or, you know, go try and figure out a way to finish my master's or something like that. And uh, hundreds of jobs applications later, trying to get married, like getting engaged and all that stuff. I finally got that into that and did that for just under seven years. So okay. That's where I really cut my teeth sales wise. And in terms of uh, where I learned or what I learned while at that place, it um, at the time it was called Battery Systems, so I can refer to it in the back. But uh, yeah. that, um, you know, sales obviously in a big way has carried a negative connotation for a long, long time. Yeah. But the reality is, is if you approach it from a standpoint of actually genuinely trying to help people and help people get, achieve their goals, whatever it may be. Mm hmm fix something that's been a hassle for them since day one or whatever it may be, that goes the long way, you know? Yeah. That's the long game. That's the long play. That's when people really want to, like, feel like they can be vulnerable with you yeah, to yeah, trust sure. you, you know what I mean? And so client after client later, realizing that, you know, my service, the quality of service I bring to the table was at a higher level than – and not trying to toot my own horn, but a higher level than most of the people I was working alongside, mm -hmm. I realized if I'm ever going to keep my clients happy long-term, I need to take it, the bull by the horns. You yeah. know what I mean? So that's what led me to, hey, I need to start my own business and do my own thing because I was sick of handing off a client that I've been working two years on to hustle for, yeah. handing them off to an upset manager with a bad ha hair day and yeah, yeah. not working out and losing the client. You know, that's... That's not what I was in the business for. No. I don't want to lose that relationship, you know, because no. for me, it's a real relationship. It's not transactional. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, that's that what real, residential real estate it comes down to mm -hmm. is not transactional. It, it That's commercial wise, mm -hmm. you know, being in commercial sales, uh, it's more numbers, yep. more transactional. Granted, you are developing that relationship. But, of course. 
But if you have the deals and stuff like that, that that's a little bit different of an angle for, you know, versus a residential real estate agent is, you know, cultivating that relationship between you and yeah. the buyer, you and the seller. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it goes back years before you get the trust of that person. No doubt. Um, and the buy-in of yeah. that person. You know what I mean? Yep. So... Yeah, I mean, I like your background where, you know, you have that sales, you know, knack and then, um, you know, moving forward to, so were you in Denver the whole time doing? Not quite. Uh, First got that job. So got engaged in 2013 to my beautiful bride. We're hitting our 10 year in March this year. So I'm really excited for that. Thank you. Um, Got that job with Battery Systems January of 2013 and did that all the way till basically January of 2019. Okay. So, um, during that time, sorry, lost that question a little bit, Pete. Yeah, Um, no, you're good. So, um, so battery sales mm -hmm. and then were you in Denver the whole time? Not, not necessarily. So originally it was here in Anaheim, uh, the Anaheim location and then working in Long Beach to part time. They hired me originally as a manager in training basically. So, uh, they wanted to help me learn all the skills from ground up, literally, you know, stacking, old batteries and all that good stuff to the sales aspect, to the managerial aspect so that I could go plant my own location, which I'm really grateful for because that showed me if I could do something that difficult on my own in the middle of nowhere in a state that I've never been to, yeah, I can do quite a bit of things. And, uh, so I'm really grateful for that experience, but, uh, so, uh, to answer that question, moved out to grand junction, the Western side of Colorado, um, very rural, yeah. very different I've than heard. where we're from here in Orange yeah, County. Yeah. Um, very outdoorsy. Uh, we moved out to there in early 2014. I want to say it was February or March. Okay. Started building a branch there. I tripled the sales in six months nice. that they had in the area. Yeah, and yeah. they said, hey, we're going to be ready to build a brick and mortar here shortly. Then the manager left in Denver, the guy that was helping me build this thing, and Basically, some spots opened up, the sales position opened up, and my regional manager called me and said, Aaron, like, I know you're passionate about this project, but we need your help elsewhere. And yeah. I said, let's do it. Sign me up. Whatever you need me to do. That's, yeah. that's just my mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sick them, you know? Like, yeah. Just go for it. Yeah. So they ended up giving me the role of sales manager for basically the northern half of Colorado. Really? Which is a pretty huge state, as you can imagine. Yeah. Um, really awesome experience, though. Learned a lot about oil and gas and what it takes to bring those resources to the ground or up to the ground. Yeah. And, um, had tons of customers that were buying container loads of these huge batteries. It was really incredible. And just to know that it was my relationship that I built to bring those sales was yeah. just a really amazing feeling, you know? Yeah, that's huge. So, to answer your question, yeah, <laughs> a little no, bit long story, not no, no, that's good because I mean, um, you probably got a lot of training mm-hmm. and education just in the sales space, yeah. So now you can take those, you know, foundational steps into you know real estate sales, yeah. As an agent, what what made you, um, what was the calling to real estate sales versus you know selling batteries or you know being up there or yeah. back down here? I'm not sure. Did you come back down here and then, I'm, even though you got your license up there, mm-hmm. so did you come back down here, work for the same company, and then start, or was it come down here and then start completely? You know, um, basically, kind of harkening back to a little bit earlier in the conversation, um, it came to a point where I realized if I ever wanted to do things in a way that I had, like, I would give my stamp of approval, you know, Pete? Yeah. I had to do things for myself, you yeah. know, to, to look out for my customers in their highest needs, you know, whatever yeah, yeah. that may be. So basically did that for seven years, started the the training and the schooling for real estate in 2019 at the beginning of it, basically, Mm -hmm. and knew that I was going to get my license. My goal was to try and get off the ground. Obviously most people think you can chase two rabbits, Yeah, but once you get into real estate, you know, if you really want to go for it, it's not a high side hustle to really like take lightly. Like if you really want to make good money doing it and be able to have a career, you got to take it seriously. And so for sure, one of my early mentors in real estate in my brokerage in Denver, down by the Pepsi center out there or ball arena now, (laughs) um, he, he said, Aaron, you know what? Like I respect your hustle and everything, but like 
if you really want this, you got to give something up. You yeah. Know? And uh, I learned after a couple months that it was time for me to hang it up with the battery company, yeah. you know? And so it felt weird. Yeah. You know? Stepping Dude, identity up. crisis for yeah. sure. I was oh, just yeah. talking to these guys, yeah. my audio guys, Nick and Dave, about it. Like, I, I was a fireman yeah. um, doing the side hustle. Mm-hmm. And I literally just said yesterday to him, I was like, dude, uh, you can't, you know, try to chase two two rabbits yep. you're not you know you're gonna catch none it's just impossible yeah. you yeah. know so exactly. that being said it it was for me same thing i kept doing this kept doing this and i i just recently started you know a family we had a baby boy and it was Congrats. like thanks dude That's and awesome. um so it was like i got to do something and i knew that you know i was eventually gonna leave um you know this is you know side note but it was like I can't continue to do this and be Mm self-sufficient and also sustainable for the next 20 years. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to run myself ragged and then I'm going to look back and say, I should have given up one thing or the other. Mm -hmm. And what is that? Well, you know, for me, and I'm not sure for you, but for me, it was like, I have some potential, right? And we don't know, no one knows where that is. That could be, you know, it could be, you know, selling 500 500 homes a year, five Mm -hmm. homes a year or whatever that is, Mm -hmm. or, you know, somewhere in between. And you got to figure out what that is and you got to go after it. And and for me, I was capped at a ceiling as a fireman. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could continue going up the ladder, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But there was there wasn't really anything driving me and like I knew my potential. I knew I could go up the ladder, yeah. but I didn't know what I could do with real estate in the sense of like looking back and saying like, Hey, I, I did this. I navigated and I did this. I opened up three branches, you know, whatever that may be right of, you know, as a broker or, or whatever that may be, but mm-hmm. there, the possibilities were endless. So what about for you? Like, what was that when, you know, your manager, right. Came yeah. to you and said like, Hey dude, you can't continue to do two. You got to, so um, he was actually one of uh, the productivity coaches, basically, in my brokerage at Keller Williams out there in Denver. And so um, he knew that I was still, you know, trying to do the battery gig at the same time. Yeah, because uh, you're trying to pay the bills, dude. Yeah, I mean, that's the reality because, you know, cashing out my 401k, that was a sketchy thing. Oh, for sure. I told myself, I'm going to at least give myself six months to get this thing off the ground before I step out of the career job, you know? Mm-hmm. But... I've spoken to a lot of people that thought they could do the same thing, and most people had to cut it short because it's like, no, this is taking too much of my time, not to mention if you have a family, too. I had two young boys, they're toddlers at the time, two and, or sorry, one and three years old. They were just little, you know, and so my wife was too busy with that. And so, you know, you got to have priorities, and those sons of mine, they're my everything, you know, and my wife, obviously. But, like, I just had to just make the call, and what's – really beautiful about it pete is and i hope the same for you too my family and my wife my wife was like babe just freaking do it yeah she was she believed in me more than i believed in me yeah and there's something just absolutely beautiful about that you know like to know you have that backing in a big way that's what gave me the courage you know like bet on myself and I'm so glad I did because yeah. I love what I do. Good, man. You know, I, I loved sales, yeah. you know, and that's why I stuck with battery systems as long as I did. But I didn't realize how much I love sales until I was an entrepreneur, you yeah. know, yeah, and yeah. a businessman, you know, so. Yeah, dude. I mean, like you're speaking a lot of the stuff that I've been going through and going back to like identity crisis. Like yeah. that's that that's not like, you know, a lot of people don't. Uh, recognize that I feel like you know, especially if they let's say they stay you know battery sales for you yeah. know thirty years, thirty five years. Yeah, and respect um, to those. Yeah, that, respect that, them for to sure. Pull that off. That's yeah. A- it's hard to stay at one place for that long. 100%. It's not as common anymore yeah, either. Yeah, it's not. I, well, I mean, maybe you can speak to this too. Like yeah. in the fire service, I, I feel like it's not as as common as it was, you know, before it was industrial era where it was like, okay, well, you had someone that stuck to a factory for mm-hmm. 30 years and then they're out or they stuck to a, you know, desk job 30 years, they're out because yeah. they got a pension or something, you know, same thing as the fire service, but net, it's changed. Like it's that's changed so much. So social spe- security used to be more reliable, you know, all that yeah. stuff, you know pension like you said yeah like you used to be able to stay at a career that amount of time and then know that you're stepping into something that'll be consistent and enough for you and your family in retirement years and that's not as not as viable as a prospect anymore in my opinion yeah like i just i see so many people that have to have multiple jobs mm-hmm. to live in especially places like orange county you know yeah you have to hustle so yeah. 
Anyway, <laughs> yeah. got on a tangent. No, there. for sure. No, <laughs> but, I mean, I, but I think it's good basis to, yeah. you know, let people know, like, if you get into real estate, you you got to be committed. You does do. it doesn't matter if you do it for a while as a side hustle mm-hmm. and um, or do it for, you know, a year and, you know, do that side hustle build up kind of mm-hmm. like what you mentioned, because I've, I've had other friends, you know, that I knew that got their license and then completely left their W-2 job mm-hmm. and didn't have any backing. Mm-hmm. And now they're struggling mm-hmm. because they didn't have any type of they had relationships, but then they moved out of the area, too. Oh, so kind of like. Help. Kind of like were you where, you know, you were based out here, mm-hmm. then you moved to Denver or you moved to Colorado, mm-hmm. um, you got your license, and then you came back here. You still had some, you know, ground roots out here yeah. and some stuff that was planted. Pretty much where, all of our families from out here, you know. Yeah. And that was a big piece to the equation when the pandemic hit. Yeah. Sorry if I'm leading you, but I feel like that's the direction we're going. When the pandemic hit, you know, like I said, I got licensed in December 20, or 19. Yeah. Had a couple good months there, starting to drum up business. My pipeline, I started to notice, okay, I've got, you know, 13 potential deals that I could do this year. Then all of a sudden, one by one, when that pandemic hit, people were just dropping like flies because everyone was terrified. For sure. Yeah, we had no idea. It changed everything. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my wife and I were just like, wow, we're out here on this island. No one had moved out there with us. Not that we expected it, but being out there on the island with two little boys and wondering like, hey, is this 401k money from Aaron's work going to be enough to sustain us? It was scary times. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, yeah, no one knew because, you know, we haven't had that type of, you know, Mm -hmm. situation. We've had downturns and stuff like that. And we, you know, everybody just rides it out. But that, like, there was no, you know, handbook for that. You know, there was no, like, type of, you know, scenario where we can look back. we can reference this. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, we can go back. This is historical trends. This is what we did. So, yeah. So, you know, for you, you got backing from your wife, mm-hmm. you know, family. Um, you had a calling, you know, to go to real estate sales. Yeah. And then three is you. I would assume at some point you were probably like, "Yeah, dude, I'm. I don't. I don't see myself thirty years down the road being at this battery sales spot." Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For a while that was brewing. I want to yeah. say a couple, three years maybe. Okay. Yeah, and uh, you know, I just. Uh, like a lot of people do, kind of put it off, put it off until I finally was like, no, I'm biting, biting the bullet. It's not a huge investment to, you know, buy the courses and start learning. Mm-hmm. And once I finally pulled the trigger on that, I want to say it was like 2018 or something like that. I was just like, I can do this. Like, yeah. I can do this. Like, yeah, it's a totally different animal, but it's sales. Sales is sales. Yeah. And that's one of the cool things about that role is, as you know, it can translate to just about anything. I yeah. mean, it can. And yeah. so... Yeah, pandemic. That was crazy times, no doubt. But uh, got through it, and um, we made it. Basically, made a trip here, in California, to visit our family. What we used to do living in Denver, we were out there almost seven years. Um, we would come out once, maybe twice a year, as you know, it gets expensive, especially with little kids. Yeah. And tickets, you can't. <laughs> the airlines want to get it filled seats, so yeah. they're gonna charge you for every one that you use yeah yeah yeah. um but we'd come out once or twice a year and looking at the cost just of that you're like man i can't justify this and so our last trip we made was in june of 2020 obviously it was pandemic we're all masked up and everything we spent a good week here with our family and i just remember we were leaving that was always hard you know Mm -hmm. because we're out on our island you know yeah but i remember Pretty much the whole time we were in Colorado, I felt strongly like that was our home. That's mm-hmm. where we were meant to be. Bought our first house out there, all that good stuff. Had an amazing agent that inspired me, actually. Okay, to nice. Ashley Rue, shout out to Ashley. Uh, nice. Um, and uh, we just, we had a time here that we were like, something feels different in yeah. 2020. And you might say it's probably partially that isolation that everyone was experiencing, the longing for community. Our church was a largely shut down mm-hmm. and, you know, it was very difficult to online meet with people and Zoom and all that. And so I just remember touching into Denver airspace and tears starting coming down my eyes. I look over at my wife across the aisle because she's with my other son and she's like, I know, like, she's like, I know. And I said, this isn't home anymore, babe. Yeah. Something's different. Yeah. 
And that felt really weird. I was like, man, I haven't felt this in a long time. Every time I go to California, it's be like, oh, yeah, this is really fun. Yeah. Surf city, you know, go get some in and out every time. And don't get me wrong. That totally is still a thing. But the truth was it didn't feel like home anymore. And that's when I knew. I was like, that was the Lord talking to me. It's, it's time to make a change, you know? Yeah. So <laughs> as crazy as it was, the equity that we had built since we had bought our first house in 2017 that was like my second one, 401k. Yeah. I sold my own house out there. That was my first listing. Nice. <laughs> sold my own house out there, made some mistakes along the road. I don't know what I was thinking. I even took a commission. Tax wise, I shouldn't have taken a t- commission, but hey, you know, yeah. you live in the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, we utilized those assets to resubstantiate our funds to be able to survive basically coming back to California crashing at some investment property of our families for a little bit while I studied and got my license here. Nice. And started kicking some butt here in California. Nice, dude. Dude, huge story, like, getting out here and being able to do that and also having, you know, um, the epiphany, you mm-hmm. know, um, and realizing, like, this is your calling to come back down to, down to California. Yeah. Um, some people's calling the last couple of years was to move out of California, but yeah. I'm glad you're back here, you Me know? Too. And so... Um, being a being an agent here mm-hmm. in California, have you been able to get business? Like yeah. wh- what has it gone from, you know, from where you came in and like you probably had just some sphere of influence at that point when you got back into California and how ha- how have you built it from there? So that piece of it's interesting. Um a lot of people, I think when you get a real estate license, I mean you talked about this earlier, is is you kind of think, well, people are just going to pay attention to the fact that I became a real estate agent, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. But that's obviously not necessarily the case. I mean, sure, if you're already like famous or something like that, it might work for you if you have that kind of influence or something like that, or an influencer, yeah. if you will. But the reality is, is you've got to really hit the phones mm-hmm. to make people aware. And the thing is, is I took it from an angle of trying to talk with people in a natural way that helped them feel like it wasn't just me looking for a sale. You know what I mean? And so in Denver, my priority was talking to as many people as I possibly can. The more hands you shake, the more money you can make, you know? And um, basically, because I had no clients, no transactions, I was just all over every possible platform, making sure all of my branding looked consistent. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know if that was right or wrong. I just thought, if there's some buyer or seller that needs a real estate agent in Denver, I want them to be able to find me. And if they find me, I want them to know that's the same Aaron Villarreal over here as it is on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever it is. Yeah. So that was my priority. Okay. And then um, building that brand, my original company was called Poplar Homes. Okay. Uh, Poplar was the street my wife and I first house together. So. Okay. That's where we got that. But um, basically, building that platform to where all my social looked consistent, Mm -hmm. I felt brought some trust to my potential clients, you know? Then what was interesting is exactly that happened. Um, My first two transactions came from referrals that came through basically the platform that Keller Williams built. Keller Williams built called yeah. Command. That's yeah, our that's back right. office. Yeah. Um, KW has the largest referral network in the world, which is a pretty amazing yeah. feat. And it's one of the largest brokerages in the world. And so I liked that consistency. Yeah. And so that's one of the reasons I chose KW over others. Obviously, there's lots of good brokerages all over the place, For sure. small and large. But I liked the fact that it was something that was very established, well known, you know, safe. Yeah. Because what I want is to bring my clients into something that is as confident and safe as how I operate. You know what I mean? And so basically in terms of getting business, um, those two first deals, they came through referrals through command. They found my profile for, I don't even know how to be honest, Pete, and uh, called me up. I got a ping on my phone. I was like, you got a new referral from so-and-so. And And I was like, okay. I started (laughs) calling and, these people are actively buying, ready to buy now. And I started hustling. They were both coming in from out of state, buying in Denver. One of them was from San Diego, which is pretty cool because yeah. I've lived in San Diego before. Okay. And one was from Chicago, Illinois. And nice. so lo and behold, I realized, you know, one way that you can 
build a real estate business is through referrals being a focus. But how to do that was the big question. Yeah. You know, those first two happened, and then it was kind of a drought again until I got licensed in Colorado or California. Yeah. So basically, I just kept on the phones. Um, sphere of influence was a piece to it, introductions, things like that. But I was calling Fizbos, expireds, okay. things like that. Everything. Yep. And uh, my mentor and coach and team lead of our team movement real estate here in California, like I was telling you earlier, number yeah. one team with Keller Williams, um, Derek Oy, he he certainly has been, you know, taking me under his wing since day one where we were, we were building a new location, first location out of state for the expansion team of movement in Colorado. That was okay. me. Yeah. Um, and Derek just basically gave me a sweet deal. He he was like, hey, Aaron, you know, if, I know you're ca- calling Fizbo's because I was waiting on California to approve me to take the test here. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I have to do something. I'm not yeah. making any income. Yeah. So I was calling Fizbo's. That's all I was doing, sharpening my skills, yeah. staying sharp on the lingo and, the, and all that stuff. I was able to s- kind of fudge it in a way because I was still technically licensed as a broker in Colorado, but not in California. So yeah. I had to be careful there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't giving advice, nothing like that. But I was able to, through the help of Derek, secure my first deal here in California. It was a $1.7 million Yorba Linda, East Lake Yorba Linda house. Oh, nice. I Fisbo cold called the guy. He, he answered. Oh, you really? Know, the guy answered. And, um, I I set the appointment. I barely got to know the guy, to be honest with you. And Derek closed it for me, and he he compensated me once I was able to get my license, and uh, that got me off the ground here. That's huge. So, really grateful for that relationship and all the people that have helped me get to where I am. You yeah, know, it, it's a collective effort, as you know. Yeah, for sure, dude. It's a it's a relationship business, nor yeah. in in life is a relationship, you know, type of you know life like yeah. you you gotta continue to cultivate the people that you know for one that you've met mm-hmm. and sometimes you know you stop being friends or don't stop but you stop talking to people that you know were friends in the past just yeah. because you know you've moved on to a, a different avenue and yeah. and then you know just building upon those relationships as as you go along in life really help you cultivate new ones yeah and and ones that are going to help you out in a career that you've either transitioned to or been in for a long time yeah and you got to realize that too i think some people fall short on that and you know think that you know, you need to look at an angle that that other person's not looking at to to really, um, you know, take into account that that relationship's going to be good and fruitful for you. Sure. And it's tough to, you know, for a lot of people, it's tough to look outside that and say, okay, well, how can I, both people benefit from this relationship, not just one, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So it seems like you found that, especially, you know, um, being able to come back down here, yeah. Um, grow a business and see the value in, you know, talking about your sales past and everything else, see the value in actually like, Hey, I'm a real guy, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I'm a real guy. You yeah. Can, I'm a real guy talk, to so many, out. yeah, so many different people. So, um, going forward for business down here, what does it look like the past like year, year and a half for you? Yeah. Um, past year, year and a half. It's still like, to be honest, frankly, newer, um, my business is not that old yet. Yeah. December 2019, that wasn't that long ago. Um, but I've realized that uh, the more consistent I'm staying in touch with people, like, I don't know what it is about society and uh, culture and that as you get older, you tend to kind of narrow your friend group and sure. kind of narrow the people you can talk to. But it's like, do you have to do that? No. I don't believe you have to. No. And so the more people I'm investing in every day, even if it's small little messages on social or, you know, just a quick call just to say, hey, man, I'm thinking of you, whatever it is, like a lot of my business has come from simple things like that. Like one of my closest friends, Sam Metzger, told me, Aaron, there's no other agent I would want to work with other than you. You're one of my closest friends. I know I can trust you. And I listed and sold his house in Denver because I was still licensed as a broker yeah. in 2021. Oh, yeah. I lived here. Yeah. I didn't even have to go inside his house. <laughs> you know, I had slept there one time yeah. before, but yeah. so I know what it looked like. You knew but, the layout. Yeah, yeah. But like, I 
I connected him with one of my top agents out of my brokerages out there. We co-listed that sucker and got it sold in two days, you know? And so like the reality is, is like if you're treating people the right way, business will come. For sure. You know, like you're in it for the long game. Sometimes I tell people all the, this all the time. Like when I run into or meet a new client or something like that or someone refers to me someone, you know, you're in control of this. And I think one reason the real estate industry has changed so much in recent years and with the development of technologies and data like you were talking about earlier is I think we've forgotten that the consumer, the actual buyers and sellers and investors – actually are in control of how this goes yeah we're just mouthpieces we're advocates Uh we're representatives uh we're a lot like lawyers too you know and so i love that because when my client says hey do something and even if it feels like it probably shouldn't say or do that it's like hey this is what my client's asking me to do we're gonna make it happen yeah whether it's inappropriate or not you know so that's how i approach it it's like hey Whatever you want to achieve, whether it's now in two or three years or blah, 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 or, you know, your knees are getting sore because you're getting older and you can't deal with that two-story house anymore, whatever it is, I'm going to be there for you. Yeah. I'm going to keep in touch with you, whether it's every six months or every six days, you know? I yeah. mean, whatever it takes. Yeah. I uh, I heard this on a podcast a long time ago, four, five, uh, like three, four years ago, is like scrolling down to the bottom of your text yeah. and like texting the last person. Yep. Um, I do that often. Yeah. So it's I like, really do. because it's you, you know, you get so consumed with life, you know, mm-hmm. family um, and not so much to like, Hey, is, you know, John Doe going to transact with me? It's more like, Hey, is this, you know, are you doing okay? Yeah. Or, you know, what have you been up to? Because, you know, we lost and they're not contacting you, you know, you lost that connection a little bit. Maybe mm-hmm. you haven't talked to them in six months, eight months, a year, yeah. reach back out to them because you're sparking, you know, another conversation. Mm-hmm. And you might, I mean, there's sometimes like I'll, I'll scroll down and I haven't talked to a person that like I literally talk to on a weekly basis, yeah. but it's been so long. You, you didn't know, things, even mean it either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, they got busy, you got busy. Yep. Um, and not so much in the direction of, hey, I'm going to transact with this person later down the road. It's just like, hey, how, how are you doing? How, You're yeah. still building upon that relationship that you had in the past. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, and you probably still talk to people that you've developed relationships with at the sales, you know, selling batteries and stuff. I like have tons of contacts in there. Yeah. So it's like, you know, <clears throat> and those people are probably people that, you know, would go to the mat for you, you know, and you would go to the mat for them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because you were there for seven years and developing those relationships. No doubt. And, and I think, you know, people lose that now, especially social media and everything else. Like it kind of seems more um, of a, you know. Yeah, whatever Aaron's doing doesn't really matter because you know you're you're seeing it just seconds go yeah. by. You yeah. know, yeah, very um, what's transitory for sure. Yeah, basically, but also like like there's so many ways you can look at social, and obviously people can dissect it and and make it as negative as they want or as positive as they want. But the reality is, is if you use it in a way that you show who you really are and you're being genuine. That'll come through. Mm -hmm. It's not the easiest thing to do, to be honest. But like, I post stuff sometimes. I'm like, man, I sound like an idiot. But who cares? I get tons of engagement, whatever, you know? And people know that's the authentic me. I'm a goofball. I'll I'll cut loose and dance or sing and play with my kids and have a good time. I'm a musician, like I was telling you earlier, you know? Like, all parts of your personality will help people feel more trusting when they're trusting you with the biggest transaction in their life. Yeah that's the reality of buying and selling a piece of property is that's largely one of the biggest transactions any person's ever going to do in their life. And so that responsibility, like I just had a listing appointment with a elderly woman in Corona last week and uh, it went great. She was by herself. She's been single for, I want to say 17 years, her husband passed. And uh, she's like, Aaron, I'm just ready to pack up and move. I don't need this big of a house anymore. I want to go be with my family out in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And uh, sweetest thing, um, I just told her, I said, you know, you're in control of how this goes, and I'm going to do everything I can to make it go smoothly, because this is a big deal for you, and I can't afford to have you have anything less than a five-star experience. And she signed with me Monday. Nice. You know, it's just, 
she could tell I wasn't messing around. Yeah. You know, and sometimes obviously you're going to have people that will never trust you no matter how genuine and honest you're trying to come at them. Yep. But the truth is, is I'm never going to force you to do something that you don't want to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. going to lay the cards out and all the data and the numbers because they don't lie, mm-hmm. you know? And if you say, hey, Aaron, it's going to have to be in five years, then it's going to be in five years. Yeah. I'll talk to you a few more times as we lead up to it. Well, yeah, that's the old school mindset of mm-hmm. like, hey, dude, Aaron, I'm going to sit down with you. I'm going to do a you know listing presentation mm-hmm. and I'm going to kind of manipulate you into you know, selling now because I'm going to tell you that the market's you know going to crash in two months. Yeah. And then, you know, now people have so much information that mm-hmm. they're like, you Can't know, really Peter, do I don't believe that. you. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, I already know what's going on. Like, so I, I'm on, you know, the side for you as well as like, dude, I lay out all the information. I say, you know, we're going to get you from, from point A through point Z. We're going to finish everything up, yep. do the listing presentation. And if they call me and say, Hey, we're actually going to wait a year because something came up or we're yep. going to wait two years. Okay, okay, cool. Call me then. No like, problem. I'll keep in touch with you. Yep. How often do you want to hear from me? Yep. Boom. Yeah. You know, and like that respect, you know, yeah. cause it's like, I've had people where I've said something like that and they, they probably didn't even believe me yeah. that I keep in touch, but sure as heck I did, yeah. you know, and, uh, they've come back. I've got a meeting literally this evening after our, our podcast, you know, to meet someone that I've been talking to almost two years, you know, and it's like, it just goes to show. And he was just looking for a rental originally, yeah. you know, now he's looking for a multi million dollar coastal property. Yeah. I'm like, this could be the biggest transaction of my life. I'm ready for it though, because yeah. I built this relationship for two years and I knew something was there. Yeah. I knew even though I went basically all of 2022, he didn't even answer me. Oh, uh, yeah. Calls, texts, emails, nothing, you know, market reports. And I thought, this could be dead, but I don't care. I'm yeah. going to keep going after it because I know I built something. I trusted the relationship that I made. Yep. And I wasn't going to let it fall apart. No. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. No, dude, that's, those are nuggets um, to make sure that you're you're keeping in contact with those people. And, and like you said, you know, a lease can turn into something way bigger than a lease. And I think that going back to the, you know, conversation of people, you know, kind of just letting relationships go or, you know, thinking relationships are, you know, just transactional or money, you know, the smaller leases are the ones that people come back and they say, you know, Hey, I got five properties. I'm actually like, I'm going to retire. I want to sell them all. So my kids don't deal with them. Yeah. Like I had to lease because that was my only option until I got access to that property or whatever it is. And it's like, but you took care of me. Yeah. That's no. the simplicity of it, right? You took care of me. For sure. You know, it's like a kid going to the doctor and getting a, a stitches or something like, wow, I'm going to keep going back to that person because they took good care of me, you know? And yeah. so that's the way I see it. It's like, if I'm really doing it from that mindset of doing the right thing every single time, no matter how big or small the deal may or may not be, that doesn't matter to me. I'm just going to help someone out, yep. you know? Like, that's the way I see it. Yeah. So... Yeah, dude. Um, well, I have a couple last like questions to kind of tidy everything up. But sure. One is, um, do you use, because as you've grown your business and been a successful real estate agent, is there an app or some type of online resource that you use to yeah. be more efficient or you know easier to get a hold of? Mm-hmm. I'm a huge advocate of, of the HomeSnap app. Okay. Um, mainly because they're agent friendly and they protect and look out for us agents because all that we do can't be replicated as evidenced by Zillow and yep. their recent problems and yep. layoffs and all that stuff. Open I door mean, too. Yeah. Yeah. Open door too. Yep. Um, some of those other ones like open door has some positions in the market, you know, that I think can make sense for certain people depending on very specific circumstances, but nothing can replace the open market and getting you maximum value, you know, for sure. yeah. No, even you... in a market that's changing like we're in right now. Yep. But uh, in terms of HomeSnap, the reason I really trust that is number one, at the beginning in Denver, Colorado, my brokerage was a pretty big advocate for why they were trustworthy and they mm-hmm. look out for us and they were built to keep us as an integral part of the real estate transaction. Um, It's also highly accurate. And I like the fact that the app is super 
quick when I'm on the road and I can't access my MLS because for some reason MLSs don't really have a very good app yet. I yeah. don't know why. Yeah, I have um, no idea either. You know, CRMLS is... Like, I don't think they've updated since 2016. No. I don't even know what yeah. they've done. Like, I got on that a couple months ago and I was like, I mean, this could work, but it's way too complex. HomeSnap takes all the pieces that you need, like the Redfins and the Zillow's apps have been, but made it accurate and... Um, reliable and consistent. So yeah. anytime I have a buyer that's like looking for something, I say, hey, you'll see me send a HomeSnap la- link pretty frequently. And it's because that's what I check when I'm on the field. Yep. If you need quick information on the HOA or what's going on with the property taxes or, or how much is left on said mortgage or whatever, that's what I refer to. So yeah. it's a really handy app. No, um, for sure. It is. Yeah, like yeah, I yeah. said, agent friendly and client friendly. So yeah, work, works both ways to me. Yeah, I like HomeSnap. Um, Okay, any book that you recommend that you've read before? Um, and it doesn't have to be more so directed towards real estate, just yeah. you know, across the board that's like you know, you're struggling to, to get over that identity crisis or anything like that. For me, I've taken, I, I'm pretty big on audiobooks too, and it's at the moment it's slipping my mind. But um, there's definitely been a few that have, have made an impact on me. Mostly the ones that are more relational focused, you yeah. know. Um, you know, the Power of Habit by Charles Dohig was a really interesting one for yeah. me for structural purposes and how to operate in business and things like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's slipping my mind. I, I really enjoy the Millionaire Real Estate Agent yeah, um, and a couple others, but yeah. Um, yeah, the one that's mainly sticking out of my mind, I can't think of no, it at good, the moment. Dude. I mean, I, you know, Millionaire uh, Real Estate Agent, Millionaire uh, Real Estate Investor by Gary Keller, both really good books. Yeah. Um, the Power of Habit is uh, another really good one. It's really solid. So, um, you know, having habits in real estate or, you know, in a profession mm-hmm. is going to get you to, you know, either climb that ladder or go to the next level. So yeah. I think those are huge. Um, Me too. And then where can people find out more about you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can find out more on my website. It's just AaronVillarreal.com. So A-A-R-O-N. I'm not going to spill the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> but, we'll put uh, it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, and, uh, you know, you can always hit me up. Uh, my cell is the same cell you see everywhere online. So, uh, or email, obviously, um, or on social. Of nice. course. So I'm everywhere. Cool, <laughs> man. Well, I appreciate it, dude. We went, you know, down a different route, which I'm I'm very excited that we did because yeah. we talked a lot about, you know, all the agents that I've met never got into, you know, being an agent right out of like 18 and 19 years old. Mm-hmm. They're all the agents that had one career and then stepped out of that career and went to being an agent had because yeah, they had to do it. So dude, it was really good to hear your story. Likewise, I'm super pumped to, yeah, to have you in person and everything else. So I Absolutely. appreciate it, man. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Thanks, dude.